Hey agents, I am back. A blind noob has returned to the Division 2. This means more conflict, more builds, more memes, and of course, more streams. In this video, I've got a super fun build for you up to heroic PvE content for both solo and group play. This is not your standard DPS build. In fact, you may think I'm crazy once you see what I'm running. But remember, any build that has a blind noob stamp of approval on it is trustworthy. You just know it works. And to prove this, I'll be running a heroic mission using this build, but with dumbed down stats on most of my gear. Because I know not everyone can have full god rolls, and if you want to compare the stats from what I'll be using to near perfect stats for this build, take a look. But enough talk. Let's get to the build. Here it is. And I know most of you are already shocked and appalled to see an assault rifle with Hunter's Fury. I can hear you crying. But noob, what about the 15% SMG and shotgun damage? Let me tell you, if your build is dependent on 15% additive damage, it sucks. Delete it. Get rid of it for fuck's sakes. Anyways, yes, we're running the Eagle Bear with Hunter's Fury. Why? Because Hunter's Fury is the best close range build and doesn't need that stupid ACS-12 to build up stacks. Plus, in case you're new to the Vision 2, the Eagle Bear provides unmatched survivability up close. The synergy is perfect. Now, before we get into specifics, I'll just show you the suboptimal roles that I'll be working with in this heroic mission. I just crafted them in a couple minutes, and these are the stats. Okay, so let's start by taking a closer look at Hunter's Fury. We're going to skip to the three-piece bonus for obvious reasons. We're getting 20% armor and 50% health on kill. This is amazing survivability already. Then we're getting a whole hell of a lot of damage from the four-piece. Basically 20% multiplicative damage to all enemies within 15 meters. Plus an additional 25% damage when you string together a few kills. And this is a close range build. So we're pretty much only going to be shooting enemies within that 15 meters. Personally, I love gear sets because they each have a unique playstyle as opposed to high-end builds which are all pretty generic and usually kind of boring. But gear sets do have their downsides. There is no one piece bonus and they only have one attribute whereas each high-end piece has two. This does, however, make them ridiculously easy to farm which is great for newer players. How can you farm a Hunter's Fury set? Well, just open your minimap and run whatever mission or open world area that currently has Hunter's Fury logo on it. This changes daily. Also, you can select it as your target loot in both Summit and Countdown by going into the minimap and pushing down on your D-pad. Then just click on whatever you want to farm. Finally, you can just craft it if you're in a hurry to put this build together. And I know you are. Anyways, back to the attributes. You'll want either crit damage or crit chance on each piece. Remember, you want to max out your crit chance at 60%. How you get it makes no difference. So we've got our Hunter's Fury mask, gloves, knee pads, and holster. Let's move on to the Eagle Bear, one of my favorite assault rifles. For starters, the Eagle Bear has the second highest DPS of all assault rifles after the Bighorn. It also has great mods and an amazing talent, Tenacity. Tenacity delays the damage you take by 40 to 80% for 15 seconds. You proc Tenacity by getting a headshot kill. Prior to the kill, you can increase the value of Tenacity by 1% per body shot and 5% per headshot. Being able to fight up close is going to make it much easier to hit headshots and keep Tenacity proc as often as possible. Unfortunately, all good things must come to an end, meaning this damage you've delayed is going to hit you all at once after the 15 seconds are up. But for every kill you get during that 15 seconds, you reduce this damage by 33%. So if you get 3 kills within the 15 seconds, you don't take any of that damage. Now the usual AR playstyles make it pretty difficult to get those 3 kills. And that's why a lot of people don't like the Eagle Bear. But because we're up close in enemies' faces, you'll often be able to get those three kills and just nullify the delayed damage. Synergy is such a wonderful thing, isn't it? Finally, the mods. 
you're getting a huge 60 round mag, 10% crit chance mod, and 15% crit damage. These are better than anything you'll get on a high-end weapon. Now for the hard part, getting an Eagle Bear. If you don't already have one, you'll either have to run Operation Dark Hours Raid on normal difficulty or farm it in the DZ. Both have crazy low drop rates, so best to pray to RN Jesus before embarking on your journey. And when you finally get your hands on this bad boy, make sure to come over to the crafting station and craft it till you get one with damage to targets out of cover. Don't worry about the rolls, you can just optimize them after without using exotic components. All right, moving on to the backpack and the chest piece. For your chest, you wanna make sure that it has the talent Intimidate on it. This gives you up to 36% multiplicative damage when you're within 10 meters of your target. That's a huge amount of damage and you'll soon see how easy it will be to maintain it with this build. As for the brand set, if possible, get Seska because it's the most efficient way to get crit chance and this build is sorely lacking crit. But if you only have a Fenris or Grupo chest, those can work too. You'll just need to make up for the missing crit chance with your attributes or mods. Anyways, how you build up the damage with Intimidate is by having bonus or blue armor. You gain three stacks per second of having bonus armor up to a maximum of nine stacks at 4% total weapon damage per stack. For this build, it's not worth it to use the Hunter Killer, the named backpack with perfect Intimidate, so just regular Intimidate will do. So, how do we get this bonus armor? Let's take a look at our backpack. This is another exotic piece called Memento. Its talent is well explained in game, so I'm just going to focus on the part that synergizes with this build, which is the blue armor. Basically, while Memento is equipped, enemies you kill drop trophies. Pick up a trophy, gain a stack that gives you a short and long term bonus for damage, survivability, and skills. These bonuses stack, so as you progress on your mission or whatever content you're doing, you'll notice yourself getting stronger and stronger. As for the bonus armor, you gain 10% for every blue core you have on your build. In this build, we have three blue cores, so we're gaining 30% bonus armor for every trophy, and it lasts 10 seconds. Plenty of time to gain and utilize full stacks of Intimidate. And because this is a close range build, you won't have any problem consistently gathering trophies. Now you're probably thinking, two bullets from an NPC and that bonus armor is gone. And you'd be right if this were some shitty generic build. But it's not. You've got tenacity on your side, not only protecting you, but also protecting your bonus armor and intimidate stacks. See? I've thought of everything. Get a kill, you've now got 80% damage resistance and an additional 5% damage. Pick up a trophy, and now on top of that, you've got 30% bonus armor and 20% damage. You're an absolute monster. And it doesn't require an ACS-12, you cowering behind cover or a shield. Sure, there will be times when you miss that critical headshot, not get tenacity and get down. But that's part of the fun, no? Because to be honest, if you're looking for a build that requires no skill to fly through content as boring as fuck, you're watching the wrong channel. There are hundreds of other builds like that on YouTube, just go check them out. But for those of you who are into using fun, challenging, and athletic builds, we've got a couple more parts to cover to bring the synergy full circle. By the way, to farm these pieces, you're best off farming backpacks for Memento and Seska, not chest pieces. There are a heck of a lot more brand sets and gear sets than there are Seska pieces. Okay, moving on to your skills. Obviously, you can use whichever you're comfortable with, but personally, for this build, I like the Banshee Pulse and Decoy. The Banshee Pulse disorients enemies, giving you time to secure multiple kills and trophies to load up on bonus armor before even taking any damage. Then the decoy just distracts enemies, so you don't take as much aggro when you're in a sticky situation. Of course, a shield, shock traps, a reviver hive, and a few others would also be great in this build, so just go with what you're most comfortable using. Now, in case you didn't already know, you need the gunner specialization activated to use the Banshee Pulse. 
and Gunner also synergizes very well with this build as the med kits give you bonus armor so you can get into cover, med up, wait a couple seconds, then return to battle with full intimidate stacks. It also gives 5% increased rate of fire for 5 seconds on kill. This is great for stringing together multiple kills, which is what you'll often need to do playing in close quarters. And there you have it. Good luck finding any other build that synergizes nearly as well as this one. Not gonna happen. And this is just the beginning. I've already got more builds being worked on in the lab as we speak. So make sure to stick around, like the video, subscribe to the Best Division 2 channel on YouTube. And while you wait on the edge of your seat for my next video, check out my streams, obviously on YouTube as well. But until next time, happy farming agents. the shade network across the entire country i'll send a team to assist maya and retrieve the fallen for a proper burial